everybody. Welcome to a special episode of the Brownie Knits podcast. This episode is the Scraptastic Sock episode. So thank you for joining me. I'm Gina, also known as Brownie Knits. And this will be a short episode that's just about my Scraptastic socks that I'm, I'm working on. And at the end of this video, I'll have a little short little tutorial on weaving in ends since that is something that a couple people have requested. So first of all, here is my, I finished knitting it, but I haven't woven in the ends, finished first sock of my Scraptastic socks. So this is not a pattern, but I did think that I would put out this video just telling you what I did in case you wanted to do your own thing. So I typically will knit um, 64 stitches on a US one, which is a 2.25 millimeter, but I only have one pair of those and they were busy. They were very busy. They had four pairs of socks for a pattern going. <laughs> um, so I grabbed my US two um, needle and I then adjusted my stitch count down to 60 instead of 64. So that's one way you can get around needle issues. <laughs> um, it also makes the sock go a little bit faster because only though, even though it's only four fewer stitches in a round, that adds up over a sock, right? So I started at the cuff because that's how I like to knit my socks. And I just did 60 stitches on my US two needle. I did magic loop from the cuff down to the toe. And I, it's all fingering weight yarn. Like if you look at all the different yarn labels, they will all say fingering weight. However, as you work with fingering weight yarns, there are some that are thicker than others. There are, you know, some that are one plied, not, yeah, and some that are four applied. So you're just gonna have some variation in there, but once I block it out, it'll be fine. It'll all just kind of meld together. So I took all of my sock fingering weight leftovers and I wanted something bright on my top of my cuff. And then from there, I just knew that I wanted really colorful and contrasting um, socks. So I did I, may, I always make myself do at least 15 rounds of my rib for my cuff because I really hate doing that um, section. So I make myself do 15 no matter what. And then sometimes I'll do more, um, but I never let myself do fewer than 15. And I went from my kind of almost a neon colored cuff color into this lovely orange because even though it is drastic in terms of a switch it kind of has some of the same undertones to it i felt like um so and then i went really drastic with my next one so i would say people ask me like how i go about putting my colors together and really i will take my little scraps and i'll hold them up to each other and what looks good to me is what goes next for instance I find a lot of inspiration in nature colors that go together. You would think purple into green would be a huge jump, um, just if you were thinking about them as colors. But if you think about them in nature, on like violets and things like that, they're together all the time. So that's kind of what I went with. I have a lot of red leftovers, so I tried to spread out the reds and pinks so that they weren't all grouped together. And my other rule that I followed for these socks is I didn't do anything that was deeper than 12 rounds. So nothing more than 12, um, except for the toe. Um, but in the body of the sock, I didn't do any more than 12 rounds total for any given color. I also went with, I didn't always end the round, the color change, I guess I should say, didn't always fall at the beginning of the round. Sometimes they changed colors at the beginning of the round, and sometimes I changed colors halfway round. And I did that for a couple different reasons. One, I was trying to use up leftover yarn, and some I had longer links than others. So it might have been enough to get me halfway around still, but not another complete round. So that's one reason why I did that. The second reason is then when I go in to weave in my ends, 
I have fewer, you know, it's kind of split. It's kind of half on one side and half on the other. And it just didn't feel, you couldn't feel that line as much if they were split between both sides. So that's another kind of rule that I followed along with. The other thing that I did, um, and I'll show you in a little bit how to how I wove them in, but while I was knitting, I actually tied the two ends together. So after I would join and do a round, I would tie them together so that they just didn't come loose while I was finishing the sock. So then when I go to weave in the ends, I'll untie that and then do the weaving in process. So that's color selection, needle size, yarn. Um, oh yes. The other thing I did, I have a lot of leftover striped yarn and I didn't want to just be like, oh, I used all these different things and oh yeah, there's where I let the yarn do all the work for me. <laughs> um, so what I did, I took my striped yarn and I cut it at the color joints. And then, so for instance, let me pick a couple. Um, I believe like, yeah. So this, let me think here. Yeah, this green and this yellow were actually in the same ball. They might not have been next to each other, but they were in the same ball. I cut those colors out so that I could put them within a different sequence in my Scraptastic socks. So that was like another trick that I did. For my heel, I used one yarn just for my heel and I did a fish lips kiss heel. And then for my toe, I just did one yarn and I did a rounded toe that I like to do that will be one of the options that you can get from my brownies sock um, recipe pattern that will be up for sale on April 4th, 2016. And yeah, so, and on my second sock, although I might have some of the same leftovers in the sock, I'm putting them in different orders. So they will not match exactly, um, they'll match in size in terms of stitch count. I still did 60. I still did the same number of rows as I went. I'm still going to do the same heel and toe. I might reverse where the colors are or I might leave them where they are. But um, other than that, they'll be different as you go along. Um, and one of the ways I got around, you know, even if I repeated colors, on this one you can see the teal only has like five rows and over here I did more like 10. So you can also switch it up like that. So I will now do a little tutorial on how to weave in the ends. So I hope that you guys will do your own little scraptastic socks to use up your leftovers. And don't forget if it's in 2016 to add it to the Brownie Knits 2016 stash down thread and tag it with 2016 stash down on Instagram too to join our knit along and register to give to win a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching. Here we go to the tutorial. Hi everybody. Here we are for the tutorial about how to weave in your ends for Scraptastic socks. So um, here's my sock. You can see a lot of my ends are not woven in, including the bottom one. So I'm gonna turn my sock inside out. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, I actually um, will end some of my rounds um, at the beginning of the round and some of them I end at the halfway point. So I have tails then on both sides of my sock to weave in. Now while I am knitting I like to just tie a little knot there um, to keep the yarns secure while I knit. Um, and then when I go to weave in my ends, I undo the knot like I'm going to do here in a little bit and then I weave the ends in. And I also have actually woven in, let's see. So here's like a little section that I've woven in. I left a little bit out so that you guys could see that. Um, 
So there's one that I've woven in and I'll show you the join on the outside. So you can't really even see it very much and you certainly don't feel it very much. It's right there. Okay. So the reason that I point that out is because when you go to weave in the ends, so I'm trying to do these things from behind the camera so that I can see what is on the screen and it's a little bit more difficult so you will not have as many problems in tying the knots. So anyway, as you do the weaving in process, after you untie your knots, if that's something that you choose to do while you're knitting just to keep it secure, after you do that, I like to give really strong pulls on them. Um, just tug on them quite a bit so that it kind of cinches it up so that you have that seamless join on, showing on the right side. So here's what I do. I take my tapestry needle and I really like this one. Um, I think it's from maybe Clover. Um, I like these types of tapestry or yarn needles because they have a large eye so they fit any weight of yarn that I'm going to use and I like that it's dipped there. It makes it a little bit easier. All right, so take one of your colors and thread it through the needle. Okay. Now, if we look, we can see, <clears throat> excuse me, we can see that my pink yarn started over here, my green yarn ended over here. See that? I like to go then in the opposite direction. So if my pink yarn started and went this way, I actually like to weave my pink yarn then back in that direction, in the opposite direction. And I just go in and up and down in my pearl bumps here until I feel secure um, in one direction and then I weave it back over itself. So you're going back into some of the same places that you came into a while ago. And then after you have it in there and you feel secure with it, then you can just snip it off. Now my green ended here. So to make it more secure, I give it my little tug and then I thread it into my tapestry needle. And then I'm going to go in that direction. So anyway, I go in the opposite directions. I go over, then I come back across it and then I snip it. But don't forget to tug so that you get kind of a seamless little join. So you can see that's what that seam will look like on the outside. It's right here is where I've woven it in. All right, that's really all there is to it. Um, I always recommend either a good TV show or a podcast or um, some good music and a cup of your favorite drink um, when you have to have a lot of yarns that you need to um, weave in and yeah, have a little weaving session. All right, so that's everything. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your Scraptastic socks.